All right, everybody, welcome to part two of our custom sold key sign. I think that's what you call it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're just going to run light burn. Um, just want to let everybody know I'm not an expert. Okay. I still have room to grow. I feel like with light burn, everybody has some room to grow, honestly. So if you guys are watching this and you are very, um, excelled in light burn, Please uh, help a girl out if you see me doing anything that could use some improvement. Write it in the comments because I am very eager to learn more as well. But hopefully also people who are watching, uh, hopefully I can teach you guys some things too because I feel like I've learned some helpful things along the way that have made my life easier when I'm working with Light Burn. Um, so yeah, put any, anything in the comments. I'll get back to everybody. I'm going to be doing some note editing. Uh, we're going to be doing some layering. Uh, we're going to use the Boolean Assistant, um, and we're going to be tracing some logos out. So uh, I think this is going to be a, a useful video. So just hang out, enjoy the ride, and remember, everybody, don't... I mentioned this in the, in the first video. Think outside the box. Don't think of this as just a sold key sign. Watch this video, learn some things, and apply it to any of your projects that you're doing any of your signs that you're doing. It's, that's how I get most of my inspiration is by watching other people's stuff and then trying to create it in my own unique way. So hopefully I can inspire some of you. Let's just get this started because this is going to be a little bit of a uh, lengthy video. Get comfy. Let's go. Okay, so here we are in Lightburn. I got my logos that I'm going to use here and then a couple images that we're going to be using. But up top right here, we have the full design. So I already made this design, um, so I thought it'd be cool to recreate it, take you guys along the way. I'm going to show you guys some note editing and some of the Boolean features. So yeah, we're just going to use this as a reference. Okay, so we're going to start off with this top logo. Um, so her logo has three colors. Uh, it's going to be black, the house is white and then the word exit is in blue. So we're going to have three different layers going on here. So let's start with the first layer. Let's get that black layer down first. So you're going to highlight this and then you're going to right click, go down to trace. And so I just want that black layer. I'm going to zoom in. I want to make sure that it's getting um, the whole border pretty on point. So hit OK. Now you're going to move it over. We are going to ungroup it. And then we are going to select just the outline that we're going to keep. And this right here, because that's part of the X. And then you're going to right click. You're going to lock this shape. Now whenever I go to highlight this whole thing, everything but that shape will get deleted. So there is our first layer that's going to be black. Okay, so now we are going to do the blue layer, which is going to be the w inner part of uh, the word exit and the house to get the windows. Yes, yeah, so we want the whole outline of the house. Okay, we're going to move that here, let's turn this blue for the blue layer. We're going to ungroup and we are going to select the inner part for exit. You're going to hold down shift and select everything that you want. So that's everything that we want there. And then right click, lock selected shapes and now highlight everything and delete. Now we are going to make sure we unlock it. And something that I noticed about this that we're going to need to do a little bit of editing here. When I go to cut this, this is going to be way too close together right here. So you're going to click on it. You're going to come over here to your nodes and then you are going to highlight the nodes that you want to move and then I hold down control and with my uh, arrow key it's just going to move over 
little bits at a time. If you don't hold control like this, I'm not holding it now, and you hit it, it's going to go over a lot more. Um, so for me, I'm just going to hold control down and move it over a little bit. Let's zoom out. That seems fine. All right, so now we are going to do the white layer. That's going to be our last layer. It's the front of the house here. All we really want to do is make sure that the tracing is around these windows because we're going to use those as kind of like a template. So bring that up. Let's make this a light gray color to represent white. We need to ungroup it. So we're going to hold, select one, then hold down shift. Select everything that we want to delete again. Delete that. So since this is our second layer here and we did some node editing, we want to use this one because when we lay the white layer on top of this blue layer, we need it to match up exactly. So let's select this, right click and duplicate. We're going to bring it over. It should snap into place. Let's check, make sure it's pretty close. So that's pretty good. So now we're going to make the windows. So come over here to square and we're going to come here. That will snap into place uh, on whatever corner. So you're just going to hold down and drag. Um, you're going to come over here. Let's make this window. Click hold down and drag. And then right here, click hold down and drag. Now we're going to select them all so hold down shift select all your squares and let's turn them blue so now we're going to show you I'm going to show you the boolean assistant so we want to select the border first hold down shift and select the square and then you're going to come up to your tools and go to boolean assistant and then you're just going to hover over these till you see which one is going to be the best option which uh, subtract A to B is the one that we want. So we're going to click on that and hit OK. Um, so now we know this is already highlighted. Hold down Shift. Let's do this one. Go back up to Tools, Boolean Assistant, subtract A to B, and then continue to do it over here. Hold down Shift, select that. Tools, Boolean Assistant. Perfect. Now, so these squares look pretty good to me, so I'm going to keep those. Let's turn this blue. These ones are a little wonky, so let's just duplicate these and bring them over. Looks good roughly right there. We're going to delete these. Hold down shift, select the other one. Delete. Now we can delete this wonky one. So let's turn this to our light gray to represent white. And then let's see if this snaps on perfectly. Bam. Always double check your work. So that looks all good. It's ready to go. Okay, so now we're going to trace this one. Um, you guys kind of probably get the idea. Now you're going to select it right click and hit trace that looks good I'm good with that, hit OK let's bring this over uh, come up here to ungroup I'm going to delete the whole border and I want to delete this tiny little R we were going to have to recenter this a little later um, and right here I can see that it's not connecting so let's connect that Let's drag that back. What you can do is if you hold down control and then you go drag from any direction, it will do it from both sides. Um, so let's see which one's going to work. Oh, I guessed right. So it's the second one down. So you have all your bullying and assistant right here too, just so you guys know. Now we're going to come over here to this one, select all that, and go to the one that we used. So now that's all put together. Um, what I want to do for this, I want to recreate Realtor because as you can see it kind of traced it a little weird. 
So let's go over to our text. Let's type in realtor. Um, and since we deleted that little R, this is not center right now. So let's delete that. Um, since this is already grouped together, if we select this and then hold down shift and select this, um, come up here to your align, uh, select that, and that will automatically put whatever you had selected first uh, center to whatever object or thing you're wanting it to be centered to. So now that that's centered, I'm just going to hold down control and bring it down a little bit by holding my down arrow. So now that's centered. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So keep holding control down. Let's make that bigger. Bigger's better. That way you can actually read it. Now that Realtor is all done, um, I just want to mention that one of the reasons being why I made it larger is this logo on the key sign is going to be quite small. So if I can make it pop a little bit more by making it a little bit bigger, I'm going to do that. Um, so I think that's good to go. Let's go ahead and select this and group it together. So next right here I have um, the house and the key. So I just got these off some free SVG sites online. There's a lot out there that you guys can check out. Or you can go on Etsy and you can purchase some. So they're already done. Now we can get started in um, getting the rest of the key done pretty much. So let's make a square. Okay. There's our square. Now let's come over here to make it a tool layer down here. Let's center this to the page up here. This is the center button. This will center it to the grid. And now we're going to come up and change the measurements. So unlock it. Uh, we are going to do it 24 inches wide by 12 inches high. Enter. Now you're going to lock it. Now we can start bringing some stuff in. So for the house, actually no, not the house yet. So what I'm going to do on the border up here, you can see that there's an outline around the key. Um, I want that to be engraved white because the material we're using is, um, the face of it is barnwood gray that engraves white. So I want the border around it to be white. So what we're going to do, we have our key selected. We are going to come over here to our offset. And we want our offset to come inward. And I think that's a little too far in, so let's do a round as well. Um, let's go bring it, let's bring it down a little bit. I want it to be pretty thin. So I think that looks good. Normally I use uh, blue for my engraving, so um, since I want this border to be uh, a thin engraving around the whole key, I'm going to select both of these and hit blue. And right now, whenever I'm working on my uh, designs and stuff, if you come up here to window, I always used wireframe course because it's a lot easier to edit when you're doing that. But if you come over to filled course, it's going to show you the actual fill. So I'm not going to leave it like this uh, while I edit. At the end, we can switch it back up to that. But that's just showing us that our whole border is going to get engraved now. So let's go back over to this. Let's go wireframe course. So that's set to fill. Now we need to, um, let's get our uh, cut line out of the way. So for me, whenever I do my cuts, I always use red. So we're going to hit the outside line here. We're going to right click and duplicate and turn it red for cut. So now that's all done. That's ready to go whenever we decide to start engraving and cutting. Um, now we're going to bring our house in. It's clearly too big. Let's make this black so we can see it a little better. Um, I've just realized that the house I was going to be engraving it white um, on the on the key itself, but I've decided that I am going to actually make this its own layer. Um, 
because I think when I put her little logo here, like you see right here, it's just going to show up a lot better if the house is black and it engraves white. So I didn't mention that material when I was going over the materials with you guys. So um, I'll make sure I add that in the description. Um, but yeah, I just think it's just going to work out better. So um, this is going to be its own layer. So we need to cut off the legs here. Um, sizing. I think that this, this sizing is going to work. Yeah. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so what we need to do, let's turn this back to blue since we need to use the Boolean Assistant. Um, select the, the outline of the key here, the inner part of it, because we need this to be cut off uh, along with this line, not the outer cut line because that's going to be engraved. So we need to duplicate the outline of the key because whenever we use the Boolean Assistant to cut off these legs, um, the one that we choose, it ends up deleting the border. So um, let's duplicate that and turn it black so we can see what we're doing. Let's turn this black. Um, let's not show the blue so that I can select the black one for sure. Okay, so select the border first and then the house. Now we're going to go to tools, Boolean assistant, and we want that one. So that way we can cut this out all by itself. Perfect. Okay, so that's its own layer. Now we can come back over here to the um, blue layer, turn that back on so it shows. So now our house is in place. Um, I kind of want to bring I think I want to bring the door down a little bit. So come over here to the nodes, select all the nodes that you want to bring down. I'm going to hold down control and just bring it down a little bit. Okay, so our house is done. Now let's bring in our exit logo over here. So let's get everything layered on top of each other. Okay, so let's select this doesn't need to be perfect because this is going to be its own layer. This is just to get an idea. If you zoom, zoom in a lot, you can move it around in smaller increments. Okay, that's good enough. Um, and now let's grab our white layer. Put that bad boy on there. It should click into place. Okay. Now let's bring this over. I'm going to group this together for right now just so that when I have it in place, I can shrink it down in place. So then, I just want the corners to be touching the very tip. So now I'm pretty straight. Okay, now hold down control. Shrink it. Let's go up. Okay, now let's add in the Exit Realty Consultant. And nobody make fun of me. I'm probably going to have to check my spelling. Did it say Realty or Realtor? Real T. Okay. Probably going to have to change the font. Let's see here. Yeah, let's see. Okay. It's pretty close. Let's see if we can get a little closer. Okay, that works for me. Let's bring in the lettering a little tighter. Okay. So that stretches across the whole bottom pretty much. So if we have this, we'll downshift and select this. Come up here and hit center. Should center it. Okay. Now we hold down control because it's going to hold it into place. Shrink it. Okay, 
that's pretty good. Now we need to bring our sold in. Let's come over here. Um, the house is going to be black whenever the material I'm using is going to be black that engraves white. And sold is going to be the Bahama blue. But So I'll make it blue for now. We're going to tilt it. Bring it up. Always keep in mind because since sold is going to be sticking out further than the house, we're going to have to inlay it into the house. So be aware of things like if it was like barely hanging on the house right here, you don't really want that. You kind of want to make it make it easier for yourself. So you might need to tweak with it a little bit. I like that because it's not barely on there so that looks good okay now sold is done so since sold is going to be sticking out um, further than the house it's going to be a thicker layer than the house we will be inlaying it like I said into the house so let's get that set up so let's duplicate sold and I'm just gonna click it up out of the way and then um, we're gonna switch this we're gonna convert this to path so right click on it convert to path now you can edit it it's no longer a text necessarily um, now we're gonna turn it black so that when we do our boolean assistant it's going to uh, work with this house okay so now we now that we can edit sold because we converted it to path we're gonna select it hold down shift select all the pieces to it and we're gonna group it together then we're gonna hold down shift and select the house now we're gonna come up here to tools so that way we can just quickly see which one's gonna work um, so the subtract B to A is going to be what we need um, because it's cutting out um, the grooves for the house there so we can delete this so now that that's all done our house with uh, the sold cut out of it for the inlay now we can select sold and just I'm going to bring it back down it should go right into place perfect um, now we can bring in her other logo so we need to make this smaller let's make it black so we can see now we're just gonna bring this to fit in here hold down control move it over a little okay, I think it looks pretty good it's not too close to the edge it's gonna work we are almost done you guys alright now we just need to bring in her information here so the font we used for this PTF serif I don't know if I'm saying that even correctly but you get the point now let's write that out Alright, let's line that up with this. Hold down shift, select her name, and come up here. Um, and this is going to align it center. And now let's bring this up. Select them together. Now I can bring them in here. I think that looks pretty good. Alright, there you have it the design is made and now we need to get all of our layers and um, set aside so we're kinda gonna deconstruct this again so let's move these out of the way always always duplicate your projects trust me I have learned over time that it's just safe to just duplicate it all right, so now let's bring our layers over and separate them all so it's easier when we cut. Make a box, and we're gonna do Bahama Blue first, 
and we're going to bring the sold in and the blue layer in the exit logo as well. Make sure you select everything and bring that over. Okay, now we're going to make duplicate, make another uh, rectangle, and we're going to bring the key over with um, all the engraving that is going to go onto the key. And that is going to be Barnwood Gray. And now we need to set this all to fill. So select it all, change it to fill, and double check it's all good. Okay. Now duplicate again, and we're going to write black and white, and bring our black and white layer from the logo over. Like so. Make sure you grab everything. Good. Okay, now we're going to do black uh, to white, but we end up changing this. It's actually going to be white that engraves black because I was having issues with black that was engraving white. Um, so just be warned when you see that later. That's why it's different. So I'm just going to change that to teal up there and change the colors down here to something else. And then we need to change that. Okay, we need to set that to fill because the house is going to get cut out. The logo is going to get filled. Change those. And um, some of the colors might end up changing um, when I actually cut it out. This is just what I'm using for now. Okay, so we are going to go over our cuts and layers and the settings I have. Um, in the previous clip there might be different colors now than there was before. Things kind of got changed when I was actually cutting the material out. So let's just start off with Bahama Blue. So I put it to teal and we come over here, let's select it. So I did 500 speed, 60 power, one pass. This cut pretty easily, honestly. It didn't have too much like melty edges or anything. Just make sure your air assist is set to like almost high. You want it on pretty good uh, to keep it cool. So that one was easy. Now let's talk about the Barnwood Gray. This one was a little tricky at first. Something that I feel like helped out cutting the white-based row mark um, is putting an engraving around the edge, which I just did this because I liked the look of it, but after cutting it, um, I think it helped it because whenever you say you didn't have the engraving and you cut along the line, you might run into the color on top kind of looking melty around the edge and it looks bad so when I engraved it it took that um, that away from happening because it would engrave and then it's cutting over here so there's no color for it to melt onto the white if that makes sense um, so I recommend you can try running some tests without the engraving around a border um, but for me that this just worked out better and so let's go over here to our fill. So I did 7,000 speed, 80 power, um, and that took it down perfectly. If, whenever you're engraving um, on the row mark, and say you're going and it, it looks like a little dirty, or you might even think that you did too much, but you you most likely did not do too much. You need to go another pass or add a little bit more power. Uh, for the cut, we have red, so let's go over here. So this was a lot of trial and error to be able to cut this thick white row mark. Our first cut line is going to be 900 speed, 50 power, three passes. I like to start on a lower power to kind of get in there a little bit, get the cut started, and then I work my way up. So we go to line two. Now we're at 900 speed, 80 power, four passes. So we're getting up there. We, we turn on the power a little bit more um, to get in deeper a little bit. Now line three, we're going to slow down the speed, 
keep the same power. And yeah, we had to do we had to do 13 passes. A reason why we had to do this many passes also is because the size of the project. So it's going around. It takes a long time to get back to the starting point. So things aren't the the cut line isn't hot once it gets back around. If you were if you were doing something smaller, um, you might be able to do less passes. But something this big, it does take quite a bit more passes um, to get through. And the cut came out looking really clean. Honestly, I was really happy with the results of this. Um, you, if you guys have any questions about uh, the eighth inch um, white row mark and you're trying to cut it, just put it in the comments and I'll answer any questions uh, that you guys have. So now down here, right here we got white. So let's go over here. And this is the 1 32nd of an inch thick row mark, um, the white. So this actually was really easy to cut. Um, didn't really have that bad of melty edges. Keep your air assist at this, the same air for everything. Um, if you're working on a similar project uh, with the row mark. So we did t 1000 speed, 80 power, three passes, and it came out looking good. So that one was pretty easy. Um, over here with black, black is always going to be a walk in the park. Okay? It's just because the color is darker. Excuse me. So we are going to click on it over here. So we have for speed, 1500 speed, and then 75 power, one pass. That was easy easy so there's not much we got to talk about that because that was really easy okay so the black to white which it originally oh yeah originally it was supposed to be black to white but um, in my previous video of me putting the sign together you'll see that it actually was white that engraved black because whenever I went to try to cut this out I was running into issues of the border looking uh, melty. The white um, base layer row mark was melting onto the top which was black and it looked really ugly and dirty. That's kind of what I was explaining um, up here why maybe putting a light fill, a light fill around the border might help um, and you might not run into the issue that I was having with uh, the, bla the black that engraves white. Um, hopefully all this makes sense you guys um, if you guys just have questions please ask me because I'll be more than happy to answer them so we just I just decided to play it safe and um, go with the white that engraves black it still came out looking really good uh, so for the settings on this let's go over here we'll do the cut first so for this cut since the base layer is black it wasn't too hard to cut through it it was a little bit thicker so we did have to do some more passes. So our first one is speed 900, power 50, three passes, and then that just gets it started, gets in there a little bit, and then line two, we're going to finish it off with 900 speed, 80 power, one pass, and then it will cut right through. Um, our engraving for this, the black that engraves white row mark, we have over here, let's click on it. So we have 17,000 speed and 70 power, one pass, and that did the trick for that. Okay, so I want to show you real quick um, something to check before you start your project. So let's use the key as a reference, bring it in. Um, you come up here to preview. It's going to give you the time it's going to take to get the project done. So that looks good so whenever the laser is coming in it's going to fill it in that direction and whenever I did the key I didn't have it set to this setting it was set to something like this Come over here so I had advanced on flood fill and that's why it was filling it in as it went up like this and around I had it set to that one and where you see red is where the laser is moving so let's bring it over here it was filling it in this way like this and guess how long that takes 
almost four hours. Okay, that is insane. And that, my friends, is called moving too quickly and not double checking your work. So don't make that mistake. Uh, if you have a big project like this, make sure you check your preview. If you see a bunch of red like this, you know you something's wrong. So you're going to come into your um, layer, and then you can start off with some of these to see if it, fix your pro it fixes your problem. But you do have the option to go to advance and flood fill. And that way it engraves it a lot quicker. As you can see, we cut down our time significantly. So. I made that mistake. Don't make it on your guys' project. All right, everybody. So I think that's it for cuts and layers. Um, if you guys have any questions, just please put them in the comments. And I will be sure to get back to you guys.